And welcome back to Hannity. From the Obamacare train wreck to the negotiations with terrorists in Tehran, it's no secret that, in my opinion, President Obama is in way over his head. Joining me now with his take, author of Miracles and Massacres, True and Untold Stories of the Making of America. And, of course, he hosts his own radio show, nationally syndicated, and he runs The Blaze, which is one of the top websites now in the country. Glenn Beck, sir, how are you? Thank you very much. I'm very good, Sean. Well, happy holidays to you. And, yeah. uh, you, you know... Um, why is there, I consider myself a Tea Party conservative, I think you do too. Mm -hmm. Why are the establishment Republicans now fighting the guys like Lee and Cruz and, and Rand and Marco? Well, why, why this divide? Really? You want me to answer that? I really want you, love to. I want you to. <clears throat> yeah. Um, progressivism. Uh, you know, you remember when I went to um, CPAC what, 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 four years ago and made the Republicans very uncomfortable um, because I said um, progressivism isn't a disease that just runs in the Democrats, uh, it runs in the Republicans. And I wrote down John McCain's name and Lindsey Graham's name. Um, there's a lot of um, progressive Republicans, and you have to remember, Theodore Roosevelt is the guy who started it. They believe in big government. And I'm, I'm sorry to say, Sean, and you know this to be true, we send people in there, uh, and it's like sending them to the lion's den, just waiting to be eaten by the machine that is Washington now. There are people that are more interested in keeping their you know their cushy jobs and and uh, keeping their uh, their lifestyle and all their perks and benefits than actually doing what's right for the country and following the Constitution. You know, th this battle does go back a long time. You can take it back to Goldwater, Nixon. You know, everyone in the Republican Party gives lip service to Reagan, but Reagan challenged a sitting Republican president in 1976. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's kind of Tea Party-ish to me. They um, said the same thing about Ronald Reagan in 1976, that he was going to destroy the Republican Party. They said that he shouldn't have done that in 1976. They said that he was a loose cannon. They called him every name in the sun. They wouldn't welcome Ronald Reagan in for all the people, all the people in the Republican Party that quote Ronald Reagan, and all the people now, strangely, like the president loves Ronald Reagan. Yeah. They're all saying, oh, Ronald Reagan, he was a... No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He was saying exactly the same thing many people who are now having stones thrown at them by the Republican establishment. He was saying the same thing. Yeah. When you, when you look at the this, this state of the economy, Obamacare the disaster, the rise uh, in the ever-growing government, deficits, debt, doubling of the people on welfare, what do you think in the privacy? I know you spent a lot of time reading and you're, you now have become a student of history. What do you think privately is going to happen to this country? I think, I think that we are um, in trouble. Yeah, and I think that we are in a situation that um, we will either rise to the occasion and be our best selves. I saw something that happened over the weekend, Sean, a poll that came out. I know you must have talked about it today. Seventy, what is it? Seventy percent of Americans don't trust each other. They think only thirty percent of this country you can trust. If that remains true, will we then become Europe? We have to trust each other. We have to be our better selves. Otherwise, um, we break up and we never come. We never come back. I, I, I think. I think there's personally a very good chance that with the um, Mike Lees and the Ted Cruz's of the world, um, that there is a chance that we do to the Republican Party what the Whigs. Um, what happened to the Whigs? They just went away. There was no third party. The Republicans, there were 20 of them. And in, 19, in 1853 and by 1860, they had a president elected. And I think that can happen in a faster time because of the Internet. If people stick to their principles and people, the people of the country, remain good and decent to each other. But if we start to believe these things that you know, we're, you know, we're all playing the game knockout and we're all fighting over, you know, and a few extra bucks for a, a discounted TV. Um, we're doomed. We're doomed. Uh, well, aren't there some easy answers? Uh, there was once a great inventor that said, and it stuck with me, the obvious, which is that, which is often unseen until someone expresses it simply. It, you know, for example, in your book, I know you, you, you talk about a lot of people and you, you delve into history and stuff, Thomas Edison, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but isn't, for example, cutting one penny 
out of every dollar that government spends every year for five years and you get to a balanced budget. Isn't that a simple idea? Isn't drilling like they're doing in North Dakota and Midland, Texas, where they're creating jobs and, and lessening our dependence on foreign oil, isn't that one of the simple answers? Yeah, you know, I, do. I, 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 don't think, I don't think anybody in Washington on either side is actually looking for an answer. I think there are some in Washington, but they're in the minority, and in the minority, the great, the great minority in the Republican Party that are actually looking for answers. And the longer we go, the, um, the, um, the more simple, but the less easy those answers become. All right, we got to take a break. Much more with Glenn Beck coming up right after the break. Later. And welcome back to Hannity. We continue with the author of Miracles and Massacres, the one and only Glenn Beck. Um, all right, you look out there in the political landscape, and uh, a lot of people, they follow you. They're following your news service. You're starting a radio news service. Um, you're a real entrepreneur, successful. I know Thank because I've been, I've been using your studio and office. I've, I've taken you it have, over. You, um, have been a, uh, you have been a great guest in our facilities and uh, made a lot of friends, and I thank you. No, I, listen, you've been great. I appreciate you letting me, you know, hijack your studio. I mean, yeah. no one's being built. Not a problem. Just leave my office in decent shape when I come back. Yeah, by the way, there was a flood there the other day, but I'll tell you about yeah, that another bet. time. Uh, <laughs> you look at the political landscape. I look at the political landscape. I'm looking for somebody that I think could not only win an election, Winning's important, but also govern the country in a way that would, I think, help us, get us on the right track, inspire people to use freedom in the right way. As you look out there, is there anybody that you see that you like, that you admire? I'll tell you, Sean, I'm going to answer this in a way that you're, I mean, first of all, I think that was the longest pause I've yeah. ever given on television before. I mean, you give old, long pauses, I've heard old, you. Old dogs do learn new tricks, not on television. Usually when somebody answers or asks me a question, I answer it right away. But I, I want to be very measured here on, on what I say. Um, uh, so let me answer things in a different, in a different way than um, probably where you want to go. I'm looking to the American people because I, I see what the Fed is doing. They are devaluing our money like crazy. I see what is happening with um, Obamacare. If you look at that, I mean, all of the things we talked about when, uh, when I was, you know, your um, uh, on-air co uh, co-worker, um, all those things have happened. And people don't either care or they didn't listen or what, whatever. It doesn't matter. Other things that we talked about and other things that we're now seeing are going to happen. The dollar is not going to last. So what, what, what does the world look like? You know, we have two ways to go. We can either tear each other apart or we can see that world that Amazon uh, was talking about last night on Wasn't 60 Minutes where, where yeah. literally the sky is the limit. Everything you know is about to change. So I'm really focused on the American people because I think until you see a change in consciousness of the Republican Party, which I don't think is going to happen, but God bless him if you can get it done, until there's a change of consciousness, it was Einstein that said, the consciousness that created the problem cannot solve the problem. So it's time for a new consciousness. It's time. I, I don't disagree. Uh, listen, I, I think there's got to be a solution. Uh, I've actually secured a website, Conservative Solution Caucus. And in January, I'm going to outline about 10 things. And by the way, if you want to contribute to it, I'd love to add your contributions. Um, you. The top 10 things that would help get the country on the right path. Right. Um, and yeah, I'd like the conservatives to be the one to do it because I believe conservative solutions are better. Well, but, I will tell you this. I don't no. really care where the solutions come from. Me neither. Um, I, I, just, I just want some solutions that actually, uh, uh, you know, are based in eternal principles. I will tell you this, Sean. There's two things. One is they got to stop thinking small. It, it's, you, you know, you really want to talk about the debt? Stop telling me about 2% budget cuts. That's not going to change anything. 2% was, you know, 20 years ago. It's over. So now what are you going to do? You, I suggest that you start selling the land in the national parks if you have to, idea. but at least sell the land, all of the federal government land that they own. What do they own that for? Sell it. Get rid of it. They don't need it anymore. It's time to sell some things. It's time to go up to, to Alaska and drill in Alaska. And if they're not willing to build the pipeline and drill in Alaska, then it's time we sell it to somebody who will because it's, we've got to pay off our debt. The second thing that, if I may, in the book we talk about what happened in Ath um, Athens, Tennessee.
If you don't know the story of Athens, Tennessee, you need to know because everything that happened in 1945 is happening again, except it's happening on a national scale. And you want to know why they're trying to silence you, um, take over your schools, take away your guns. You want to know why that's happening. And not just this administration, but the Republicans are also silencing the Tea Party through the IRS. You notice there's no, there's no big Republican outcry on that. You want to know why? Go read the solution that was found in Athens, Tennessee. That's why they have to, they have to um, uh, make sure that you don't feel empowered at all. It's a, it's that a was lie. an incredible story about a, a, a corrupt sheriff and what happened when GIs came back yeah. home. Real quick, so you tell 12 stories in the book. Tell us quickly. Uh, well, let me just tell you this. Uh, we tell the miracles and the massacres. This is Tokyo Rose's actual microphone that she world and used in World War II. How'd you get that? She, she was a hero. She was a hero, not a villain. We need to know the massacres and the miracles to be able to really understand and save our country. And you talk about wounded knee, and you talk about my lie, and, and all those other is issues with a different perspective. Some, we also talk about some great things, the miracle that came out of Al Capone that you've never heard of. Right. Amazing stuff. Glenn Beck, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it.